Hallelujah. Praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, beloved brethren. I come to you in his mighty name. And um, we have Psalm 63 um, in the screen. And we just, it's, it says, a thirsting soul. <laughs> now, we drank of the cup of Jesus. Jesus said, drink of my cup and you will have everlasting life. You will live forever. You, you will not thirst again. So as believers, with, the, with Christ in us, the hope of glory, the rivers of living waters from heaven, because his cup is perfect, he resurrected from the dead, he is the son of man, and he rules over all creation. And with him we are subduing and taking dominion of all creatures, uh, as Adam and Eve were instructed to in Genesis. Um, but then they listened to the serpent, and you know that they had to put have skin coats put over them, put out of the garden. But now, through Jesus Christ, the last Adam, as it says in First Corinthians 15, we are contending for the um, for the faith. We are subduing and taking dominion over all creatures because the Son of Man has rule over all creation. So that what Adam and Eve were told to do, we are doing with Christ, the body, the the body of Christ, and. Christ, the Lord in heaven, hallelujah, hallelujah, with him, we are, we are subduing and taking dominion over all creatures, hallelujah, all right, so I hope that this blesses you, and that you all are drinking of his spirit, and not of anything else, Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit, and they are life, so Jesus is, is giving water freely to those that want to get born again, um, but for us, we just have to tap into that spirit right and how do you do that you've got it there out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters it says in the scriptures but the enemy wants to stop that work and so we're going to talk to you a little bit about um about what's going on in the world and how the enemy is sending out a flood and the lord is trying to get his waters to flow more so that we can offer everlasting life to people and that they could glorify our heavenly father Okay, I did a prayer before this, so I hope you go and watch that prayer. It's, I think it's in my shorts. Um, so uh, pray with me in the, in the name of Jesus, um, the only begotten Son of the Father, the Son of Man, Son of God, who is Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. The Word of God that became flesh. The Word was with God, our Heavenly Father, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. So the word is God, hallelujah, forever and ever. Heaven and earth will pass away, it says in the scriptures, but his word remains forever. It says in the word of God that um, though, though um, everything will fall, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word remains forever. Um, and it says in the scriptures that the word is not bound, okay? The word is not bound. The seed of the word that we received whenever we believed in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and re resurrection, <coughs> excuse me, the seed of the word is not bound. The word of God is not bound. The spirit is not bound. The, the um, rushing mighty wind is not bound. So if you're feeling bound, if you're feeling struggling and you're feeling these things, just remember that you have the spirit, the spirit of your faith, okay, that you got from God's sanctification from the spirit when you believed by your faith, God, you received Christ's faith. Okay, that's the faith of, faith of Christ you received. You put on Christ, it says in the scriptures, and you're translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. At one moment, you were that that happened. At one moment, you were translated into the kingdom. What the enemy is trying to do is he's trying to stop the faith. He's trying to stop your trusting in God. He's trying to stop the rivers of living waters with his blood. Okay, it says in Revelation, the dragon spews out of his mouth a flood. Let's go to that scripture. And that's what's going on with a lot of brethren. They're struggling because this did happen. And we have all these movements, these riots, these, um, uh, what is it called, these uh, challenges that you see online. You see all these different doctrines of devils and fables. You see all of these weird things in the world. You see a lot of things in the world that the devil has spewed out of his mouth to go after the woman. And the scriptures in Revelation, that was what the Lord was showing me earlier. I read all of Revelation. Revelation. Well, actually, I listened to it this morning. Um, I didn't read it from my Bible. I just listened to it. If I'm not reading, I listen. And um, one of the things that came to mind as I was, I was listening to it, 
and I'm re repeating it, you know, as the word is speaking to me, I, sometimes I speak it out loud. That helps me to remember, you know, because he said the words they speak, they are spirit and they are life. Remember, we trust in the body, in Christ and his word, not in our word. We don't trust in doc doctrines of devils or anything. So we have to um, wash, you know, the, the scriptures are for comforting you know, to comfort the saints so you know that you have everlasting life, so that you know that in him and in his doctrines, the doctrines of Christ, that you're remaining in him, hallelujah, and you know that, that he will not lose one. So um, it's they, they go away into other ideas. And so this is something real important. Revelation 12, 15, it says, And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Now this part's important. What's the seed of the woman? Okay, that the, the, the dragon is going after. Very important part. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What's the, He's enraged, the dragon. What's the testimony of Jesus Christ? The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So they keep the commandments of God. Number one, we believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Number two, they have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus said, I send you prophets. I send you wise men. He sent you the apostles and the prophets. He sent us the prophecy in Revelation, he sent John by the word of God, as it says in Revelation 1. So Revelation 1 is very clear that he sent John. So he sends the prophecy. This is the prophecy of this book, Revelation. He says in the end, it's prophecy of this book. So it's prophecy. So Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Christ is Christ Jesus is a spirit of prophecy because we don't know him anymore after the flesh and blood because his flesh was torn, the veil was torn, his blood was poured out, his water was poured out. So Son of Man resurrected is flesh and bone. It says in the scriptures in the New Testament that the body of Christ is flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone, okay? Just like Eve was flesh of Adam's flesh and bone of his bone. And since skin coats were put over us, were put out of the garden. Adam and Eve were put out, actually. And then their seeds, that's where they're having the babies here. Uh, the women are having the babies here, and the men are seeding the babies here. And this is where we are. And it says in the scriptures that um, Israel goes to Babylon, and there she will be delivered. The daughter of Zion actually says, which is Israel, will go to Babylon, and there she will be delivered. And she's delivered delivered a child, okay? <laughs> we see the child, the seed of the word, Jesus, was born of a woman, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so the, the dragon, this flood that he's going out making war with is with doctrines of devils. This is one way that he makes war. The other way, and violently killing, it says in the scriptures and the prophets, Jesus said that they take that they kill people with the scriptures, false prophets and demonic uh, uh, doctrines of devils. And he even talks about them in Revelation whenever he's talking to the Asian churches, the seven churches which are in Asia. And all scripture is given, beloved, for reproof, for instruction, for edification, for how to live a godly life, the scriptures say. Um, and so the scriptures, these scriptures, these seven, these instructions for the seven churches are for us too because all scriptures for us. Even though this was written to Asia, it's for us, for our learning, for our understanding. And same with all the scriptures, is for our learning and understanding. So we see that the dragon spewed out a flood after the woman and those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What's an example of a commandment of God? Well, the apostle said, little children have no idols. In the covenant, the blood covenant, the testimony of the blood of Jesus, okay, and keeping the commandments and the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. John is in the body of Christ. He had a spirit of prophecy. Christ gave him the word through his angel, and the word of God 
was given to Christ, to give unto his angel, to give unto John. That's the hierarchy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One spirit. So that word, this word, revelation, is one, from that one spirit. The, the um, God is the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three bear a record in heaven, and these three are one. They're bearing a record of God's Word in the Son, who is his Word, to give to his angels, to give to John. And you see that in Revelation 1. So there you could see the hierarchy. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now, John is his friend, but he's also his servant to prophecy. And that's through the spirit of prophecy. I hope this is blessing you and edifying you because this is what the church needs right now. This is what the church needs right now because the church has got all sorts of weird things being spewed out like a flood to try to take us. Um, and we're not going to let them, okay? Um, so you've, if you've taken and you've drinking of that water of life freely, as it says in Revelation, drink of the water of life freely, Jesus says to do that. He says in Revelation Right here in chapter 22, verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Beloved, I've had the pleasure of speaking the word of God to people because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and experiencing them getting baptized in that spirit. And that is the greatest joy I could ever have. Because why? Because the Lord is that spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these people are getting baptized into our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And translated into his kingdom at one moment. Hallelujah. And then they live and move and have their being in him, in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But the dragon that sends out a flood, he brings in and violently through these riots and these different movements, doubt, you know, tossing people with doubt. Um, they bring in Jewish fables. A lot of people are talking about these ideas that the Jewish fables has brought in, and it's just not true. Um, these are all doctrines of devils. So turn with me. So what, let's turn to Titus 1.4. So the woman are those that believe, okay, you cannot have a spirit of prophecy if you're not born again in the Messiah, okay? You cannot have, I mean, they could be given words. They can be given the, the, the prophecy, but by the scriptures that point to him. But if they don't, they're not born again of the spirit in Christ, then they're none of his, Jesus said. All right? He said, you must be born again. So how are they getting this prophecy? Well, they may be reading the scriptures, but to understand, if you have the spirit of prophecy, you know Jesus Christ is the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the first thing you got to have, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. There's another thing that I want to talk about that came up. A sister did a video today. I want to mention that she was talking to some Roman Catholic priests. Now, we hope these men repent and come into the faith. But these Roman Catholic priests are saying there's no... Um, heaven and there's no hell that earth is it <laughs> they are making their they are making their treasures on earth and they're trying to drag other people into the lake of fire with themselves this is this is absolute blasphemy of god's word to say there's no heaven god jesus himself speaks of the kingdom of god he speaks of the kingdom of heaven he speaks of um, hell, the lake of fire. He speaks of damnation and stuff like that. So for them to say that there's, that's not true. And even in, in second Peter, it says that heaven and earth will pass away. Okay. And there is a fire uh, for all the merchants in revelation and God judges and then cast the dragon in the lake of fire with, and, and Jesus speaks of the rich man in hell, <laughs> Okay, he says, even if one were to raise from the dead, that man would have never believed, even though one were to rise from the dead, meaning that he would never believe in Christ. He wouldn't, and his five brethren would not believe in Christ or the prophets. Okay, what the prophets spoke about Christ. So he's in hell. Why? For unbelief. Okay, 
And even though he was thirsting for the cup of water, read the parable of the rich man in hell. I mean, the, the words that Jesus spoke and, and um, by whenever he was raising Lazarus from the dead, you know, that whole, that whole thing that he was talking about, that was, there, he talked about the rich man in hell where his worm was dying not and he was burning. And even the prophets speak of this fire, this unquenchable fire the prophets spoke of. And where did the prophets get that word? They got it from Christ, okay, the Son of Man, Jesus the Christ who came of flesh and blood, man, 2, 000, over 2,000 years ago, okay? So these people are bringing in doctrines of devils, and, you know, they're giving heed to Jewish fables, which we'll read in Titus 1, 4, it says right here. And this is, we're contending for the faith, beloved. This is probably the most important thing to do right now because a lot of brethren are being tossed to and fro from every wind of doctrine and, you know, denying, their, and some of them even denying the Lord Jesus that bought them. I've met several of them on the streets in the times that I've been out there um, speaking the word of God in faith that God will add to the church daily wherever he sends me to fish, right? There are women fishermen or fisherwomen <laughs> because we are in the body of Christ, one faith, one hope, one spirit, one body. And that means there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither male nor female, but we are saints, a saint, a royal king and priest, it says in the scriptures, hallelujah. So in Titus 1, 4, it says to Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Is that the one that I was supposed to read? Titus 1, 4. I was looking for the Jewish fables. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Praise our Lord and Savior. It's supposed to be right in here. I'm pretty sure it's in here. Um, let's just read. For this cause I left, cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, not given to filthy lucre, that's a big one, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faith, faithful word, hallelujah, holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially the, they of the circumcision. What's the circumcision? They of the circumcision. Those are Jewish people that Jesus dealt with in his time. They said, crucify him. Okay. They were mad. They were like completely violent. Okay. Violent with his apostles, violent with the saints, completely violent and gainsaying and, and, you know, uh, bringing in and you know, turning people away from Christ. In Acts 13, a man is false prophet is a Jew and he's turning someone away from Christ. Oh my goodness, it's awful. So he says, especially them of the circumcision. All right. So be careful. We need to follow Christ and not these people because they might draw us away and then we might be going, crucify that saint, crucify that, you know, blasphemous person, you know, to our brethren. That's what's going on now. Sometimes when I'm giving the gospel of Jesus Christ, Christians are the, wor the proclaiming Christians, I better say that. And I've seen many of the brethren are the worst ones coming against the evangelists who are giving the word of God, speaking the word of God. That's all we're speaking. We're not having our own words. We're speaking the word of God. And they come against the word of God. It's not a good thing. Okay. Um, so it says... For there are many unruly and vain talkers since whose mouths must be stopped. Those are the those of the circumcision, especially those of the circumcisions, whose mouths must be stopped, and who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. It's for money. Lucre is money. 
So that's why the, the scriptures say the love of money is the root of all evil. So we can go on. Let's see. I'm looking for the one that says Jewish fables. I don't know where that is. I think it's in, I thought it was in 1-4. Um, I may be in the wrong one here. Uh, where is it? Anyways, I will have to look. I thought I put it in there. Let's turn to James 1, 27. 1, 27. Oh, this is the other thing. Real important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the other thing is, you know, Jesus Christ was crucified by a religious spirit. A lot of people out there are talking about this religious spirit. Oh, you have a religious spirit. Or they will tell others, oh, beware of the religious spirit. But the religious spirit that you should really be concerned about is those that are going to crucify or kill people or hate people. Because hate is murder also, right? So that's where that seed of a sin is conceived, is in the heart. That hate. And then it turns to murder, okay? Because you already murder someone with your heart and mind, okay? In hating them, and then you, then it turns into the action. That's what the those of the circumcision, those that circumcise themselves. And you know, this could be the circumcision could be those of the circumcision could be the circumcision in the heart whenever they first believed that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the Living God, Emmanuel, God with us. That they believe that He died on that cross, the tree. And they were circumcised into the body of Christ. So Simon the sorcerer, if you read about him, he believed that Jesus was the Christ. He was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so he would be of the circumcision. But he didn't get the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he wanted to sell. He was about filthy lucre. He wanted money, okay, which is the root of all evil. And the Heavenly Father will uproot anything that he did not sow. He's the husbandman. He's uh, the son of man, sows the seed in season and out of season through his body, the body of Christ, through his people. And the, the father of lights, the father of spirits, he is the husbandman of the vineyard. He tends to his garden, to his, his um, what do you call it, his uh, vine. And Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Remain in me and I'll remain in you. So these are important things. Um, but you see how... It could be either. It could be those that are of the circumcision who circumcise themselves and they were instructed to. They are of those that are law keeping, you know. But I don't know. Maybe it's not them because they're in the body. They're talking to believers here. So they have to be of the circumcision. But why would he separate that? That's why I think it is those of the circumcision Jews or Israelites because he mentioned the circumcision. So he's talking to saints. And them that are within the saints that are circumcised. Okay, so yeah, that kind of makes sense. Let's see how the Holy Spirit kind of clears these things up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we were in James 1.27. So those people who are speaking about religion, this is pure religion. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows.